Hey, very good. Hello, and welcome to our HTML5 lecture series at SNHU. I'm Tom Adamson, visiting professor, and this is lecture 14 on OOP introduction. And um, first I'll have my coffee. Mm, that was good. Okay, let's talk about first what OOP is, and we probably heard about this before. What is OOP? OOP is object-oriented programming. What we're going to be seeing is a demonstration of why object-oriented programming is a good thing. Now, what you'll see in this demonstration, you'll see a lot of code. Don't worry about it if you don't understand the code. Just get the idea is that in one case, there's a lot of code that maybe doesn't make much sense and where you're not using object-oriented programming. And then in the other case, where you are using object-oriented programming, there's very little code, but what code you do use does make sense. So that's what we want to get out of this. All right, so if you see it and you're looking at code and it doesn't make sense, that's okay. It's good it doesn't make sense. That's the whole idea. And then when we use object-oriented programming, we'll see where it does make sense. All right, so if I could now have it on the screen there, please. And then once we're on the screen, I'll go ahead and I'll start the I'll start the demo. And the purpose of this video is to try and show you the reason why object-oriented programming is a good thing. Uh, how it can save you time, money, and a lot of frustration. So what I've got here is I've got two uh, web pages, and two HTML5 pages. I got one that is the old way of doing stuff, and that's the way we've been doing it. We haven't been using any, uh, we haven't been created creating any object classes ourselves. We've been using some object-oriented programming with the document object model, but we haven't created one ourselves for the putting the stuff on the canvas element. Uh, the other one is the new way. This will illustrate the advantage of using, hopefully, the advantage of using object-oriented programming. This file right here is a JavaScript uh, uh, document that contains the class definition. We won't be seeing what's inside that this particular one in this tutorial. We'll be seeing that in the next tutorial. Again, the purpose of this tutorial is to hopefully convince you that uh, learning how to do object-oriented programming, how to make classes and objects using JavaScript is in the long run going to save you a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of frustration. First of all, let's look at the old way of doing things, the way we've been doing it. I'm going to double-click on this guy here and see what we've got. What we have here is we have two canvases, two can buy. <clears throat> and, um, this is graphics without OOP. And obviously, I've got a rectangle here that's blue, a rectangle here that's red, and a rectangle, another rectangle over here that's red. And what I'd like to do is let's look at the code that was used to generate this. Uh, what I've got, this is my style sheet. Now, this shouldn't be new to you. Uh, I make the body background black and the color light green and the font family. And then what I have for my two canvases, one, I, I had an ID of C1. And that's this canvas right down here. There's the ID uh, attribute right there is C1. And then the other canvas, C2, I made that ID attribute C2 and so on. So you can see that's how I did, made the two different canvi. And there's other ways of doing this style as well. It's just like anything else in, in coding. There's many different ways of doing it. But this is just the way that I chose to do it. Okay. Now. The important thing is, is if I want to make a blue rectangle here, what I have to do, as you recall, I have to go through all this stuff here. I have to do a variable here, document, get element, by ID, and then put in the ID, and I have to make sure that I use the correct camel code here to do that, and I got to type everything in just right, and then this has to match uh, 
this guy up here, and then I have to say this, and it's going to be 2D, butter, 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 ba, and then what's the fill style is going to be butter, butter, ba, and then I actually go ahead and fill it, and that's the X uh, where it's offset, the Y where it's offset. That's its uh, uh, dimensions of the, uh, of, the, of the width and the height. And then finally, I get my blue rectangle. If I want a red rectangle, I have to redefine that as red, and then I have to fill it again, and I'm putting in new dimensions just to separate it, and lo and behold, there is now my red rectangle. But supposing I also want this red rectangle to appear over in this canvas as well. Well, what I have to do now is I have to change this. Uh, I have to make another one, my sub blah, 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 ID for C2, because this canvas element uh, identifier is C2. And then I have to go through and do this. I have to go ba -da -ba, -da -ba, -da -ba, ba remember that? And then I have to, and then I'm going to set the color now because it's new. And then I got to go ahead and repaint it uh, on the other one. And then lo and behold, it now appears on this canvas over here. Okay. So hopefully uh, you you realize, especially if you tried this in, in, in previous videos. This is a lot of complex coding, and the syntax is not easy. And because the syntax is so uh, different from one step to the next, it's really prone to errors. So what I want to do next is I want to go ahead and look at uh, the, the other one here, the new way of doing it. And I'm going to double click on it. And when I double click on it, uh, up come my two, canvi, my two canvases, and there's nothing on them. Okay, well that that sure simplified it, didn't it? Well, let me look at let me go ahead and look at the open this with uh, Notepad, and let me look inside here. And what I've got inside here is the same thing that I had in the previous one. There's my style, but the difference is now is that my script, this right here, I'm using uh, this other file that I told you about. This guy right here, I'm using that because that has a class definition in it called the rect class, the rectangle class. And what I'm doing, that's, there's my two canvi that are defined just like I did in the previous one, nothing different. I'm going to bring this down here so you can see everything. And what I've got is I've got a lot of room for my script. That's where I had all my other stuff before. Remember all that tons of code that we had before, the blah, 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 blah stuff? What I have here is I'm making an instance of the rectangle class. And this is a variable, and I can call it any legitimate variable name that I want, but I am now creating an instance of this class, and this is called an object now. And RECT1 is an object that has uh, properties and it has methods. A property is something that has like a color or a width or a height or what have you. And a, meth and a method, it does something. Like, let me just show you a, uh, uh, a, a method that it has here. Uh, let me see. Uh, that's called rectangle one. How about if I just do this? And I'm going to say, I've got this. I'm copying and pasting this stuff here. So you don't have to suffer through all of my uh, slow typing. OK? All I did here, this is a method that this object has now. It's called draw. All right, so let's try it. You ready? All right, I'm going to go here, save, and I'm going to come here, and I'm going to uh, refresh this guy. And bang, look, it made, <coughs> it made, a, <coughs> it made a, a rectangle. You might say, wait a minute, wait a minute, man, you're cheating. You can't tell me that the, these two lines of code is all that took to make that rectangle because uh, somewhere it, it's just blue, right? And it's a certain distance from the X and a certain distance from the Y. And it has a certain height and it has a certain width. Yes, that's true. But I used what's in object oriented program was called a constructor in order to make that happen. And we'll talk about constructors. You might say, OK, smarty pants. Supposing uh, I want to change the color of that. How, how do I change the color of that? Well, here's how you change the color of it. Before I do the method draw, I change one of its properties. And this is its property, RECT1.color equals green. Does that make sense? That's a nice syntax. So let's go ahead and save this dude right here. And let's come over here now and refresh it. And look, now he's green. 
that was sure easy, wasn't it? A lot easier than the other stuff we've been doing. Supposing, for example, I want to change where he's located. Okay, so I, I put in another property. This is a property, all right? Because it, it, it changes a, a, a value that it has. So now x, the distance from the left side is going to be equal to uh, 50 instead of what it is now. I don't know what it is now, but watch. I'm going to refresh. And there it is, moved over. So I can change any of these properties. And then I use the method draw. The reason why I know it's a method is because it uses these uh, parentheses. Uh, uh, Properties don't use parentheses. Properties, they're, they're equal to something, okay? Uh, uh, like color and like uh, X and Y. And then we'll go over what all these different things are and what have you, but for right now, that's pretty cool. Supposing, you might ask, okay, supposing, you might say, uh, which is a legitimate thing to say, I want to have this guy here appear over here. What do I have to do? Well, actually, all you have to do is change the ID attribute, uh, and, uh, change the ID property. Like, for example, you see this ID for the first canvas is C1. By default, from my constructor, in, which is in my rectangle class, by default, the ID attribute is C1. Okay, if I want to change that to C2, then what I need to do is I need to come down here, and I'm going to type this in, R-A-C-T-1 and then dot, and then what I want here is ID equals C2, okay? So I change the ID attribute of that object, rectangle one. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna come here and draw it again. So I come over here and do a control C, come down here, control C, control V, and I'm gonna go ahead and save this dude. I save it, I come over here and I refresh, and bang, he's over here now. And all I had to do was change the ID uh, 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 property, okay? And then just use the method draw again. You might say, wow, look, and look at the syntax. Now, this is real easy to troubleshoot. Hopefully, this is already sold you an object-oriented program. And you might say, well, but supposing I want another one of these. I want a different rectangle. Okay, you want a different rectangle? Okay, that's cool. Let's just take this, Control-C. We'll come down here, uh, Control-V. All right, and we'll call this rectangle RECT2 now, okay? That's a different rectangle. And then what, where, what canvas you want them on? Well, we know by default it goes on canvas one if we define this as canvas one, right? Okay, so you want to draw something there? Uh, yeah, well, let's give its, uh, its X and Y dimensions a little bit different. Let's, uh, well, let's, no, let's go ahead and draw something there. Right, we'll call it rectangle two draw. Right? That's that's the method, right? Okay, right there. And all we have to do is change this to a two. Okay, and now what we're going to do is save this, and we're going to come up here and refresh it. And there's the there's the other one. There's the other uh, rectangle. Now I can change this width, and I can change this height. Let's change this height. You ready? Okay. What do you think? What do you think it's going to be? R E C T two dot what? I, yeah, that sounds right. H-E-I-G-H-T is going to be equal to one. Let's make it uh, 100, okay? And then save it, and then come over here and refresh it, and there it is. as a height of 100. All right, well, hopefully this has convinced you to use object-oriented programming rather than the old way of, of doing it without object-oriented programming. And you might say, is object-oriented programming hard to learn? Well, it depends. Uh, if you're very, very patient with yourself, you can learn how to do it. Because hopefully you can see that, man, you can apply this all over the place, all different kinds of projects that you'd be working on, and you can save yourself tons of time. And since you can save time, uh, that means any company you're working for, you can save money, and uh, that all of a sudden makes uh, employers very interested uh, in you. Okay, uh, thanks for watching this video. That's it for now. Okay, back on the screen. Well, hopefully that has convinced you that object-oriented programming is something really cool and really good to know. And that's why it's a top subject. And it's especially important if you're going to be using HTML5.
because HTML5 makes a big use of object-oriented programming. Okay, that's it for this lecture. Thank you for attending.